Good afternoon and welcome to a very brief update here on the Angry Astronaut. Didn't plan on bringing this to you because for the first time in over four years, I've had the freedom to create content when I want to this month without having to worry as much about the financials of the situation simply because things have been going so well because of you guys watching so much. So I actually get to have a real vacation this time. And I'll bet you that's something that Sunita Williams wishes that she was having right now, because this was a much happier time, I think, in her life in 2012, when she was giving us a tour of the International Space Station, and she only had to stay on the station for, well, less than six months. And now, she's been stuck on this space station for a considerably longer period of time. First of all, thanks to the many and ongoing failings of the Boeing Starliner, but in this case, it's because of a delay from SpaceX. Now, again, there's a number of things about this situation that annoy me tremendously because it isn't absolutely necessary for things to have to go this way. Let me explain. SpaceX recently completed a new Crew Dragon capsule, the fifth that they actually have in their fleet of spacecraft, and that fifth spacecraft is, of course, not available yet, even though it was supposed to be available for the Crew 10 flight. And until it is actually prepared and ready to take the Crew 10 mission up to the ISS, Crew 9 doesn't have the flexibility to come back. And of course, Sunita and Butch, even though they weren't part of the original Crew 9 manifest, have become part of this crew because of the failings of Starliner. So again, not a terrible failing on the part of SpaceX, but given the fact that this whole thing has been delayed so significantly already, and also given the rumors about Sunita's health, well, this is far from ideal. Now, Crew Dragon Freedom is the spacecraft that is currently docked to the ISS, and they also have the Endeavor and the Endurance, which remain in rotation for use in NASA's commercial crew program and private astronaut flights such as the Axiom space missions. And then finally, the Resilience flew SpaceX's Crew-1 mission and has been used for the private space flight pursuits of billionaire entrepreneur and philanthropist Jared Isaacman, who's probably not going to be using it for quite some time, given the fact that now he's been appointed as NASA administrator, assuming, of course, that the Senate approves that. So adding a fifth Crew Dragon to the fleet would allow space SpaceX a lot more versatility in its commercial offerings and NASA some extra flexibility in its mission manifests as well. For example, had a fifth Dragon been available to launch without disruption to Crew-9 and Crew-10 missions, it's conceivable that NASA could have utilized such a vehicle to bring these two astronauts back home at an earlier date, although I have a feeling they probably wouldn't have. According to Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew program, quote, we appreciate the hard work by the SpaceX team to expand the Dragon fleet in support of our missions and the flexibility of the station's program and expedition crews as we work together to complete the new capsule's readiness for flight. So the new Crew Dragon is expected to arrive at SpaceX's processing facility at Kennedy Space Center in early January, where it's going to undergo final processing and checkouts before its debut launch. And of course, this is very problematic. NASA's checkouts and other tests that need to be carried out, even on a spacecraft that's already been through lots of testing, never takes just a few weeks to happen. All of these things take time. And that's what Stitch said as well. Quote, fabrication, assembly, testing, and final integration of a new spacecraft is a painstaking endeavor that requires great attention to detail. So it may not even happen in late March, as NASA has currently announced, 
announced, it could be even later that these astronauts are going to come back. On the good news side of things, however, it does appear that Sunita is not suffering from any sort of health or weight-related problems or anything else as was previously supposed because she's announced recently that she's going to be carrying out some EVA activities, something that would definitely not happen if her health was failing. I'm still not convinced that she wasn't having problems in the past, but as I say, all of that seems to be resolved at this point. So Crew 10 that will be going up on this new spacecraft are NASA astronauts Anne McLean and Nicole Ayers, along with JAXA's astronaut Takuya Onishi, and then finally cosmonaut Kirill Peskov. And if everything stays on schedule, their late March Falcon 9 launch, the ISS, will put Crew 9 on track for a return to Earth in early April. So yeah, the spacecraft will arrive in late March, but Sunita and Butch will not be coming back until early April. In other words until after over 10 months in space, even though they were only anticipating that they were going to be spending about 10 days or so in space. Again, this is something that astronauts usually live for. Both Butch and Sunita are arguably nearing the ends of their careers. Both of them had an opportunity to go into space several times prior to this mission, so this may be their last opportunity to fly on the ISS. Although I I suspect with all the private space missions that are becoming available here in the near future, they may get another chance. Nevertheless, in their minds, they may not get that opportunity again, so I'm sure they're very enthusiastic about the idea of staying on the station. However, in terms of the long-term health consequences that this may represent for these two, that could be far more significant. Both of them have already spent a very long period of time in space as far as the cumulative time in their lives, especially Sunita, who's had at least two very long endurance days on the ISS, and this will be her third. That takes a considerable toll on bone loss, muscle mass, loss, and even though muscle loss can be compensated for with exercise and physical therapy once you return to Earth, the bone loss is essentially permanent. And on top of that, Sunita has been reporting vision problems. This is a fairly common complaint that astronauts go through when they're in a microgravity environment. The eye behaves very differently in microgravity, and that impacts different astronauts in different ways. Sunita experienced vision problems early on in this mission, although those seem to have been resolved at this point. Still troubles me to see how emaciated she looked at this point in the mission, although, as I said before, it does appear that whatever was happening there has been resolved by now, which again is very good news. But nevertheless, anybody who claims that this is not going to have some sort of impact on these two people in the long run. Anybody who says that this Starliner debacle and everything that came after it is not going to have real-life consequences for Butch and Sunita are simply delusional. There are going to be problems. We shouldn't minimize them, and anything that does come up as a result of this extended and unexpected stay should be reported. We need to know what sort of impact these unexpected events could have on people in space if they weren't prepared for these sorts of missions on the front end. All that having been said, I will keep you up to date on everything going on with this situation. Thank you very much for watching and for being so supportive lately. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and also please consider supporting this channel on Patreon because I have a new and very special piece of Amuamua content coming out for Patreon folks in the next few days. Looking forward to bringing this to you. So until next time, stay angry about space.